I picked these up at a yard sale for a dollar. I was attracted to the small size and the shape of the jaws. The pliers reminded me of the alligator gar lurking in the waters behind Joe's shop. Nana, 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 Joe. I soaked the pliers in evaporust overnight to remove the corrosion and any leftover oxide finish. I decided to give my power tools a break and hand sand the pliers. Now I realized the wire wheel and the belt sander would have been quicker, but sometimes I like to take my time, listen to some music, and contemplate life while I work on my old rusty junk. I like to keep a few different sized dowel sticks handy to help me sand curved sections. The wire brush did a nice job cleaning up the knurling on the jaws. Here's the plier sanded down to 600 grit. There was some deep pitting that I wasn't going to be able to sand out. Just for fun, I went over the plier some more with several grades of wet and dry paper. I used WD-40 as my lubricant. I decided to try cold bluing. I had some clean bore black magic on hand. First I thoroughly degreased the pliers with denatured alcohol. Then I rinsed them in hot water and dried them. I applied the cold blue with a cotton ball. Originally I had planned on only bluing the handles, but I decided to go over the whole thing. I let the cold blue work for about a minute. The metal turned a rust orange color. I rinsed the pliers in hot water, dried them, and then went over them with superfine steel wool and oil to even out the color. I coated the pliers with oil and let them soak overnight. The cold blue gave the little Utica pliers a deep dark finish. This was a fun little project. I had been on the lookout for something to try the cold bluing on. I think the pliers came out okay. I consulted alloy artifacts to see if I could determine how old my pliers were. The Utica Drop Forge and Tool Company dates all the way back to 1895. Early tools have the three oval or three diamond Utica logo. Utica did not start marking tools with model numbers until the 1920s. The company went from a checkered handle pattern to plain handles in the mid 1940s. The Utica, New York, USA marking was discontinued in the late 1950s in preparation for moving to South Carolina in 1962. I consulted the International Tool Catalog Library and found a 1924 Utica catalog that has a pair of number 777 long needle nose pliers. They look like they have the checkered handles. Later catalogs refer to the pliers as number 777-6. My pliers have plain handles, no dash 6 in the part number, and are marked Utica, New York, USA. So I think that means they were made in the late 1940s or early 1950s. Okay, that's enough. Sherlock needs a rest. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Check this thing out. I picked this up at a yard sale for two bucks. I think it's called a crown molding plane. It's marked J.W. Massey Falada on the stock. The iron is stamped, but I can't make it out. I think the Falada abbreviation for Philadelphia suggests the plane might be from the 1800s. If anybody has any information on this beauty, let me know.